everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we are going to dye a hand wound ball of yarn with some food coloring to create a gradient colorway. Now Rebecca, you might be asking, haven't we done this before? We have, but today we are going to do this in two steps. So we are going to dye our ball of yarn in one color first. Then we'll remove it from the dye bath, let it cool, rewind this into a second hand wound ball so that what was on the outside is now on the inside, and then we will dye it again. And so this will give us a really cool, really, really cool gradient, and I am really excited. The last time I did this, I started off by having no vinegar at all in our dye bath. And this allowed some of the color to penetrate all the way to the center of our ball of yarn. Today, I'm gonna to start by adding one tablespoon of vinegar to eight cups of water, a little over one. And this is the proportion that we are gonna to use to heat up in our dye bath. Now, the reason why I did it while I've measured it here is I think that a full eight cups of water plus the ball of yarn might be a tiny bit much for this pot. So I'm gonna start heating a portion of this color. Let's see. Okay, I couldn't remember how far. All right, so I've just added our eight cups of water with the one tablespoon of vinegar and Hopefully this won't displace too much of the volume and we'll be able to add it in just fine. It might be close, so I might have to pour some of this off. Um, and with the first step, I will be adding this ball of yarn dry to our dye bath. The two colors we are gonna use today are Wilton's Royal Blue and Wilton's Kelly Green. And I've added a quarter teaspoon of each food coloring into half a cup of water. The Royal Blue has um, blue number one with a little red number three. So we might see a tiny bit of purple on one end. And the Kelly Green is made of yellow number five and blue number one. Both of these colors break, um, but break pretty subtly. So I think that we will get some really cool yarn when we use them together. Okay, our dye pot is at a boil. And I have not completely mixed my royal blue dye, but the hot does help. Yeah, the rest of it dissolves, so stirring that up. Last few drips, and now we are going to start submerging our ball of yarn. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it takes a little while. Yeah, there's going to be the eight cups a tiny bit that doesn't go in. Actually, I am going to reduce the heat. But already you can see the kind of cool way that this color breaks because the color that is now left has a lot less red in it. All right. Oh, fun. Actually, we see a lot more purple than we normally do. Um, just because, I mean, again, this with surface area, the red number threes strike really, really quickly. All right, now, if you wanted more even color around the outside, you could have more water and use a bigger pot, but based on the, I guess, the diameter of these hand-wound balls of yarn, even my larger pots would have a hard time fitting putting all this in, but I am going to reduce the heat even more so we stop some of that bubbles and I am going to let this sit for let's say five minutes and then we will come and take a peek at the colors that are left, but just so you can see right now we've got a lot of really, really bright blue. Woohoo! And we've got some of that fun purple on the outside. Okay, 
I'll let this sit. I'll come back in five minutes. A lot of color has absorbed to the yarn, but there is also a lot less left because we only started with one tablespoon of vinegar in the pot. And since we have the yarn in a ball form, that acts as a physical barrier uh, to the dye getting around. So I'm now going to add two tablespoons of vinegar to our pot and just sort of help this get access to that. There we go. The heat is still on, but I am now going to give this another five minutes and then we'll come back and check on our progress. All right. This last little bit of blue is being a little stubborn. Um, that five minutes is up. I think I'm going to reduce the heat, give this another 10 minutes, in which case, I mean, I'll come back, but then we'll turn off the, we'll turn off the heat and start laying this cool in the, in the pot. But yeah, normally if I'm just dip dyeing, say the, the hank of yarn into this much food coloring within a couple minutes it would have all been absorbed so I'm just gonna let things sit with low still under low heat for 10 minutes and we'll come back and check after those 10 minutes I'm now gonna turn off the heat and let this start to cool in the pot and see if during that process a little more color will absorb after about an hour, the water is still warm, but we have absorbed most of the color in the pot into our yarn. I am now gently squeezing this because we need this to cool so I can wind this into a brand new center pull ball. Let's set this aside and take a closer look at our yarn. So finally, you can really see the red that is part of the royal blue. And that's on the outside, that tiny bit of red number three struck first. And then, as we get towards the center, we've got paler and paler and paler colors. I'm not sure if there'll be any white, but there possibly could be. So, actually the outside is pretty, is not so bad so I'm gonna start trying to loosely wind this into a um, another hand wound ball as I am rewinding this ball I'm taking care to wind across four fingers because while I want to wind it loosely I also want to try to take care to not stretch this as much as I can so having the fingers in here helps keep things loose. But also, here's kind of a fun, I guess I'm about halfway, halfway through, so you can see some of the fun variation that we're getting. I think that this yarn would have been stunning if I had just decided to keep it without dyeing it again, but I am also excited to see what will happen next. What a difference, right? We have finished winding this ball, and now we're going to get our dye path ready so that way we can dye this again. There are a few differences this time. The wool has already, oh, it's already damp, and it already has some acid in it, so whatever colors that we add will probably start to strike a bit faster than they did the first time. But we have a lot of color that penetrated the ball the first time, so if this green penetrates the the yarn a little less, I think that we'll still end up with something stunning. This is the same pot of water that we used before. Um, you can still see a tiny bit of residual blue. And I'm gonna add whoop, about two more cups of water. I'm not adding any other vinegar yet, <laughs> but I might add some more in a little bit once we see how the colors are absorbing. But once this is hot, we'll add our dye and start adding our ball of yarn. We are starting to get some bubbles. Yay! All right. <laughs> let's, oh, and I still got some green on my spoon, but let's stir in our Kelly green. Get it all stirred up and hopefully off of 
our spoon. I know that the Kelly Green tends to be a little stubborn. There we go. Okay. And now we can add our ball of yarn. Oh, that went in faster than I expected. <laughs> the nice thing about it being pre-soaked versus not. And so I'm just going to roll it a little bit to get some green onto the top. But now, now I'm going to go ahead and let things simmer for, let's say, five minutes. And then we'll come back. But I will reduce the stove is still on. I'll reduce the temperature a bit, but let's just, you know, you can see we've got a lot, a lot of green in here, and we'll see where we are in five minutes. Clearly, it's time to reduce the heat a bit more, but the five minutes have passed, and there is still a lot of color in here. Now, I added some more water, we added some more dye, and now I'm going to add a tiny bit more vinegar. Um, I think I'm going to add two more tablespoons. I forget if that brings us up. The total that that brings us to. I'll add it in a text. <laughs> I'll add a little subtitle over here. Um, but just to sort of help keep things moving. And I'm going to add a little bit, sort of rolling this to get a little more up on that top region. <laughs> you can even splash. But I'm gonna go ahead and let this go another another five minutes. But five more minutes have passed and there is still a lot of color in our dye bath. And again, there is the reason why this takes a lot longer is that the dye has limited access to the yarn. Some of the yarn is really accessible, but there is a limit to how much dye a tiny bit of yarn can take. So therefore we have to sort of wait for the dye to penetrate the ball, the ball of yarn, and to start absorbing. So what I'm doing right now is I'm cranking up the heat a tiny bit. Well, I'm cranking up the heat a lot because I'm waiting to get some more bubbles in the dye bath again which you can see are starting to come up. And then, well, I'll wait for that to happen, but you can see that the color on the bottom is a lot darker than the spot on top that is more exposed. Um, Woohoo! Yeah, so we're, we're starting to see some, some bubbling. I just thought it would be nice to give it a tiny bit more heat. And now I've turned off the heat completely. And so I will come back and check in in 15 minutes, but I am expecting that we will see that the water has cleared more than it has already. After 15 minutes, there is still an awfully lot of green in here. I mean, you can see the bottom of the pot, which means that it is clearing somewhat. <laughs> but we are gonna continue to let this sit um, in the pot, the water is still very, very warm, and we'll let it sit a couple hours if necessary, and I will show you what the, the dye bath looks like when we are ready to remove our ball of yarn from the pot. Due to life circumstances, I ended up leaving this yarn in the pot overnight. So not only are we completely at room temperature now, but there is still a lot of color left here in the pot. Granted, it is paler and bluer than it was, but we still have some color in there. Now, if we were to use that to dye something else, it would be a nice pastel. Um, and you wouldn't get anything as deep as this green here, but ooh, we have a spot on the bottom too. But let's peek in. Interesting. So if I look in towards the center, you can see that we've got, a lot of those blues look like what we had before. So I think that the green just did not penetrate very far at all. But what we have to do next is unravel this onto a knitting knotty to see our gradient and get ready to wash our yarn. I just finished winding this yarn onto my knitting knotty and wow, 
It is even better than I had hoped. We have a really even gradient overall with our greens transitioning into sort of this aqua and then the darker blues on the other side. In the more intermediate sections, there is a lot of variation of tone and shade of color. So I think that this gradient would be subtle, lovely, and make a really, really amazing project. Now I need to tie off our skein and wash the yarn. All right, let's start rinsing our yarn. Given that the wash water at the end had some color in it, it wouldn't surprise me if some color comes out now. But so far, so far so good. <laughs> There's a hint, a hint of like the color, but most of this color is solidly and by most, I mean basically all of the color is solidly in the yarn. I'm going to use a little bit of clear dish soap to help dislodge any residual dye. But, you know, as long as the water runs clear, once I rinse out the rest of the soap, then I can hang this up to dry. And now you can see there's a hint of color coming. So I'll rinse out the soap, I'll keep rinsing this until the water runs clear and come back and show you the finished dry yarn. The finished dry yarn is unbelievable. These colors are vibrant and we have this glorious transition from the bright royal blue all the way to the Kelly green. We even have some hints of purple from the little bit of red number three that is present in the royal blue. I don't think that the little hint of purple shows up well on camera, but I promise you that the hint of red shows up on my eye. But otherwise, this is not a colorway where you feel like you have a pastel. You've got rich, saturated colors throughout the entire skein. When I was finishing up this yarn and it did not absorb all of the green food coloring, I thought I was going to be a little disappointed and that the green penetration would be really shallow. Well, I am in love with this yarn and I cannot wait to play around with this technique more in the future. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. I release one or two new episodes of Dye Pot Weekly every week and do multiple live streams every month. If you would like to support Chemnitz on a more personal level, check out the Chemnitz Patreon. You can find the link in the video description. Thank you so much for watching.